most of us spend a lot more towards the beginning of the month than the week three of the month. In fact, research shows that we spend the most on week one, followed by week two, and then there's a dip in spendings on week three before it goes up in week four in anticipation of the salary. Many of us actually get paid towards the end of the month, which could explain the rise during the last week of the month. And we keep doing this month on month. But what if we treated the salary coming in for the next month slightly differently? In this episode, we are covering the seven things that you need to do when you get paid whether you get paid on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, or a fortnightly basis. The first thing to do is make sure that your money actually hits your current account, which means then you can allocate your money from your current account. And just by virtue of seeing more money in your current account, you are less likely to rely on something like a credit card spend or payday loans. Payday loans are actually one of the most expensive loans that you could take on. And there are quite a lot of people who still avail payday loans. And payday loans have some ridiculous interest rates, sometimes even going up to 1200%. So what you want to do is minimize your reliance on payday loans and also credit cards and increase your reliance on the money that's coming into your current account. From there on, you need to take the second step, which is build your emergency savings so that you are feeling safe about money. Your emergency savings will typically be three to six months of your living expenses. So this will only focus on your needs, not on your wants. When you focus on your needs, you will see you need shelter, you need food, you probably need medical supplies, you need laundry detergent. However, you probably don't need a takeaway or go to a restaurant three times a week. This is really covering for your basic expenses in the event that you lose your job or that salary stops coming in. So you want to start building this up to about three to six months of your living expenses. For most of us, 10,000 pounds is around the right ballpark for three to six months of living expenses. But obviously this depends on your family size, on how many people are working within the family, how big a house you have, how many dependents you have. So this you have to personalize to yourself. One of the things to note about emergency savings is that you want to keep that money liquid. You don't want to put it into stocks and shares because you are keeping this money in case something untoward was to happen. Say you run into a medical expense. What you then don't want is to see that you have lost 50% of that money in the stock market. Therefore, this money really needs to be in a safe, liquid savings account. So any bank that provides a hassle-free high interest account is your best bet. What you don't want to do is put in too much money into that emergency savings account because typically there will be a lower interest rate so inflation will start eating into your money. The third place your money needs to go is towards your high interest debt. Tackling debt is fundamental to actually building a solid financial foundation. You want to pay off all the debt you have before you start investing money. And here we are talking about high interest debt only, not your mortgage payments. So your mortgage payments will likely be at an interest rate of 6% or lower. Some of you in this current market might have gotten a mortgage at even 7, 8%. But what I'm really talking about are your payday loans or credit card loans that are typically charged at an interest over 20%. So you want to pay off your highest interest debt first and from there on the next most expensive loan. This is one way of doing it and this is the most rational way of going about paying off your debt. However, financial management is not only math but there's a lot of mind to it. And if you want to get a real quick win, I would start with the smallest loan that you have. Go pay that off completely so that you have a win. You have showed yourself that yes, you can do this and then go off to the next highest interest rate loan and start paying that off. The next place or four, five and six need to happen simultaneously. Number four is invest your money. I have talked about the importance of investing a number of times. 
So what you want to do is once your emergency savings is built up to a certain amount, you want to start investing your money. Ideally, you want to invest this money into the stock market or into any other assets that your independent financial advisor might have advised you on. So as a rule of thumb, they say you save and invest about 15 to 20% of your money each month. Obviously, if you have different financial goals, for example, if you are pursuing doing something like the fire goal where you want to be financially independent as early as possible and retire early, the percentage savings could go up to 50, 60, even 70% in some cases. I'm not a proponent of the lean fire movement, more on that later, but what you really want to do is take this 15, 20, 50, how much ever percentage of your salary that you want to invest and put it towards an investment pot that will likely grow over the next seven to ten years and even more because the magic of compound interest can make this extremely lucrative over longish periods of time. So yeah, start investing your money. My personal favorites are index funds, but I'm not a financial advisor. So if you are, you want to be doing your own research to suit your own circumstances. The next place I believe that your money should go to is investing in yourself. I believe that we are our biggest assets. If we can make ourselves worthy of a higher salary by investing in ourselves that's the best investment because once you start earning more you can always save more invest more and spend more so for me earning more becomes a no-brainer and therefore anything that I can do to earn more money is an investment in myself and that I keep continuously doing every single month without fail and there are several ways to invest in yourself you could go get a degree you could go get an MBA you could go do an apprenticeship you could go and attend some events conferences you can go do a webinar you can go and do courses online and there are so so many ways of investing in yourself that could be appropriate for you in that situation. Not always is an MBA appropriate for you. Not always is another degree going to get you a higher salary. Not always a technical certification is going to give you a higher salary. You need to understand what is going to ultimately get you a higher salary. One of the best ways, as I always say, to earn more money is to get a higher paying job. That's the most time efficient and effective way to get more money into your bank account. And in fact, if you are indeed looking for a job, I'm hosting a free workshop on the 1st of September to help you with your job search. And I'll be talking about the mistakes that I see candidates make through the job search process and how you can stand out and become a compelling candidate. If you are interested, link in the description box below. It's on theabundantpsyche.com slash job search slash yt if you go and sign yourself up it's a free workshop that i'm hosting and we can get you started on that journey to more money and more financial abundance the next place where your money needs to go to is on spending and like i said four five and six need to happen simultaneously in my opinion you have to obviously spend a certain amount of money just to sustain yourself that could be paying your mortgage bill your rent your grocery bills your cleaning supplies and so on if you have family maybe school fees maybe medical expenses whatever else that is absolutely necessary for you to be alive and then there are wants of course if you have not paid off your higher interest loans like your credit card bills like your payday loans go do that first before coming to this bucket of wants and wishes however if you have done everything that i have mentioned till now you can really focus on your wants and your wants could be something as simple as having takeout or one of my personal weird ones is I love to spend a lot of money on incense sticks. Most people don't get it. Most people don't realize how much satisfaction I gain from buying an incense stick box for 10 pounds, but that gives me tremendous pleasure. And like that, I'm sure you have some quirky things that you want to spend your money on, but you feel that the value per wear or the ROI on that spend 
end is not as high. And this is where I personally think that frugality doesn't help. Once you have checked off everything else on the list, you have done everything that you needed to do. Not spending money could actually be limiting for you to create more money. If you're not investing in yourself and spending money on yourself and building your skills up, you could see your salary tanking after a certain number of years. Similarly, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the lean fire movement. I get it. Being able to survive on the basics is a huge advantage that a lot of people have. And if it was to come to that, I want every one of us to be able to be living on the bare minimum. However, what I would rather not have all of us do is survive on the basic necessities because when you are surviving on your basic necessities, you are, say for example, not spending money on these luxury incense sticks or some luxury fabric. And when you are not spending money, the workers who are making those incense sticks, making those fabric, don't have a job. And you are not contributing to their livelihood. And your frugality might make it extremely difficult for some people to live. However, I do want to emphasize on the fact that you want to be sustainable and conscious with your spending. For example, if you are someone who loves fashion, I would really encourage you to consider whether you want to buy cheap goods or luxury goods. The people who are producing luxury goods are experts in their crafts. I've been studying fabric of Egypt and Bengal for the last couple of days and I'm just amazed by the skill some of these weavers and like weavers there are so many other workers and artisans who we could support by spending and tuning into our spending. So I'm all about spending more money because I believe that that money will ultimately come back to us. That's how the economy works because if there's starvation in one part of the world there's only so long that we will not be affected by it however like i said you don't want to be spending a ton of money on your wants without figuring out the rest of it so you do want to be conscious about whether you have built up your emergency savings whether you have built up your investment pot whether you have invested time money and energy into building your own skills up when you have done all of that from one to six. The final one I have for you is buy your time back. And this is somewhat related to my earlier comment about when you spend money, you are actually enabling other people to live a decent livelihood. So for example, if you don't have time or you don't have the skill or the patience to do a certain activity, you could hire help to do that for you. One of my little luxuries is the money that I spend on my cleaner. And that gives them a decent way of earning their livelihood alongside me actually buying my time back. You could hire a chef, you could hire a gardener. There are a lot of possibilities here. And the point I'm trying to make is not only does it help the other people, it also helps you because money you can make back, but time fortunately or unfortunately will run out. And there's only that much time you have in the day, in the month, in the year to get ahead on your goals. So if you have the disposable income to buy your time back, consider spending some money on that so that you are treating your time like currency. And one of my mentors once told me, when you value your time more than you value your money, you'll have plenty of both. And that's rung true throughout my life. I have always been obsessed about how do I make this possible in the least amount of time. And when I have focused on time, typically I have had more money. So those were the seven things that you want to do the next time salary hits your bank account. Is there anything that you want to add to this? Drop a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because it does really motivate me to create more of such videos. And if you enjoyed this, you might enjoy something like this or this that I'll link up here. And I'll see you the next time. Bye.